80 million people are forcibly displaced currently from their homes. This is the size of a country larger than France. My name is Dr. Mehrana Ibrahimi, and I'm a scholar of Middle Eastern diasporic literature and art, and the author of the book, Women, Art and Literature in the Iranian Diaspora. Currently, I'm working on my second book, on refugee literature through a research supported by the Social Science and Humanities Council of Canada. I also teach courses on diaspora and world literatures, as well as women in Islam. I posit that stories are as important as food and medicine for the refugees. And refugees are storytellers by necessity, if not by nature. Writing life stories is an empowering act of subject formation for the otherwise bereft individuals. An empowering act in the face of all the mechanisms of discipline and control that governments have built to shun and ignore the existence of these casualties of unjust wars and occupations. Personal life stories give voice and dignity to the bare human beings outside borders of citizenry. Personal life narratives help reclaim that personhood of the objectified individuals. It is our ethical duty to bear witness to these traumatic stories. In my first book, I theorized these literary and artistic productions of Iranian women living in exile. The news media desensitizes the audience by using stock images of throngs of asylum seekers. It is dehumanizing how they are portrayed as faceless masses, menacing, homogenous. We have become desensitized to the pain of others. Diasporic artists having faced war, gender inequalities and racial discriminations can help that break that cycle of compassion fatigue. The confluence of poetry, politics and the visual arts in their works can incite genuine curiosity and attention about the others and provoke a sense of responsibility. In my book, I argue that aesthetics, politics, and ethics can instigate a creation of an aesthetic community, what Kant calls a census communis. In my second book, I focus solely on refugee autobiographies and the contested title of the refugee. While exile has a rather poetic connotation, refugeedom is a term that sits at the intersection of the legal discourse, policy planning, and the arts. In this book, I analyze works such as Behruz Bouchani's No Friends But the Mountains. This is the account of his six years of imprisonment on a Pacific camp. His only crime was reaching Australia by boat and applying as an asylum seeker. He won Australia's richest literary prize for his memoir while still living in captivity with no access to a bank account or a proper computer. The book was thumbed one text at a time on a smuggled phone. Another memoir, Dina Nayeri's Ungrateful Refugee, in which she bemoans the expectations from new citizens to perform their gratitude, to make something of their lives and live up to others' dreams. Nayeri, an Ivy Leaguer herself, says that we shouldn't ask for resumes in order to rescue someone from falling into their graves. And lastly, Golriza Kahraman recently became the first refugee member of parliament in New Zealand. Her memoir, Know Your Place, outlines all the racism she faces on a daily basis. In spite of the fact that she is an Oxford-educated lawyer and a Kiwi, as she calls herself, just because of being a brown woman, she's faced with all these stigmas. I argue that refugee narratives subvert the systematic silencing of asylum seekers. By bringing these intimate stories of injustice to the free world, they fortify a social bond that eventually envisions a community of witness. Active empathic witnessing is our ethical responsibility without which wounded authors will not be able to fully articulate themselves and thus work through their traumatic lives.